Okay. Think about this. A health issue that hits up to 80% of women by the time they're 50. That's huge. But here's the kicker. Maybe three quarters of them. They have absolutely no idea they have it. It's really quite something. We're talking about uterine fibroids. Essentially, they're um, non-cancerous growths. Mm -hmm. Muscle tissue, connective tissue, mm -hmm. growing in or on the uterus. Yeah. And yeah, often totally silent. Found by accident a lot of the time. So that's our mission for this deep dive. How do we actually see these things? We're looking at how modern imaging brings them out of hiding, their real impact on health, and critically on pregnancy. Okay, let's unpack this. So first off, what are fibroids exactly? You hear the term butt. Oh, it it can be tiny, right? Like pea-sized, but also massive. Exactly, from very small to, well, honestly, as big as a watermelon in some rare cases. And where they grow in the uterus is super important. Right, the location matters. You mentioned different types, like inside the uterine cavity. Uh huh. We talk about location using terms like submucosal, that's inside the main cavity, often affecting periods. Intramural means within the uterine wall itself. And subserosal is sort of butting off the outside. Yeast type behaves differently, affects symptoms differently, dictates treatment options. Makes sense. And that's where imaging comes in, I guess, to figure that out. Precisely. Imaging is absolutely key. Usually the first thing is an ultrasound. A transvaginal ultrasound specifically can often spot them down to about five millimeters. You might see this characteristic world pattern, kind of like tree rings. Okay, so ultrasound's the starting point, but you said it doesn't catch everything. Right. It's good, very accessible, but it detects maybe 82% of fibroids. So yeah, it can miss some. Nearly one in five, potentially. Which brings us to MRI. That's the, uh, the gold standard, isn't it? It really is considered the gold standard for fibroid mapping. Its accuracy is much higher, around 93%. But it's not just about finding them. MRI gives you the full picture. The full picture? What does that mean exactly? Well, their precise size, the exact number, exactly where they are in relation to everything else. It also shows their blood supply, which can be important for treatment planning. And it can reveal internal changes, like something called red degeneration. Red degeneration. I've heard that can be really painful. It can be, yes, especially during pregnancy. MRI helps identify it through specific signal patterns, like bright T1 signals. It really lets us see the fibroid's whole personality and its relationship to nearby organs, like the bladder or bowel. Okay, so we can see them clearly. Let's talk impact. What problems do they actually cause? When they do cause symptoms, it can really affect quality of life. Uh, the most common issue is heavy menstrual bleeding. About 30% of women with fibroids experience this, and it can often lead to anemia, fatigue. Yeah, that sounds draining. What else? Pelvic pressure or pain is common too. And depending on size and location, they can press on the bladder causing frequent urination or the bowel causing constipation. And what about fertility? Can they actually prevent pregnancy? In some cases, yes. For about 2-3% to of women struggling with infertility, Fibroids are identified as the only cause. They can interfere in a few ways. Yeah. Maybe physically blocking the fallopian tubes. Okay. Or altering how the uterus contracts, which is important for sperm movement. There's even research looking into changes in the uterine microbiome. Wow. And then pregnancy itself, that adds another layer of complexity, right? Yeah, it really does. Those rising hormone levels, estrogen and progesterone, especially early on, they can actually fuel fibroid growth in the first trimester. So they can get bigger during pregnancy. What does that mean for risks? It means increased risks, unfortunately. Miscarriage rates can basically double. There's a higher chance of preterm birth. And serious issues with the placenta, like placenta previa or abruption, become two to three times more likely. Two to three times. And we see a big jump in cesarean deliveries, about a six-fold increase. Sometimes a fibroid literally blocks the baby's way out. Plus, that painful red degeneration we mentioned that can cause significant abdominal pain for up to 15% of pregnant women with fibroids. Gosh, that sounds quite concerning. Is there any good news here? Yes, absolutely. It's really important to stress this. The vast majority of women with fibroids still have perfectly normal, healthy pregnancies. And interestingly, fibroids often shrink quite dramatically after delivery. Many reduce by more than half within about six months postpartum. Sometimes up to 70% shrink significantly. Okay, that's definitely reassuring. So this better imaging, it's changing how doctors approach this, moving beyond just reacting to problems. Exactly. We're moving towards more proactive care. Advanced imaging enables things like MRI-guided focused ultrasound, a non-surgical way to target and treat fibroids. 3D ultrasound is also improving surgical planning if surgery is needed. 
and there's growing interest in preconception imaging, identifying potentially problematic fibroids before a woman even gets pregnant. So boiling it all down, what's the main message for our listeners today? I think the key takeaway is that uterine fibroids are incredibly common, yes, but they are definitely manageable and highly treatable. Right, don't panic, but be aware. And modern imaging is really the crucial tool. It doesn't just tell us if fibroids are there, but reveals their specific characteristics, their personality, that allows for truly personalized treatment plans and helps predict potential issues. So if you're listening and experiencing things like really heavy periods, pelvic pain, maybe difficulties with pregnancy, imaging can provide answers and really help guide what to do next. Which leads to a really interesting thought, doesn't it? Given how common fibroids are and the impact they can have, should we perhaps be thinking about systematic fibroid screening during pregnancy and a standard practice? To potentially predict and prevent adverse outcomes for more women, it's something to consider.